So I'm going to assume that you are watching this video to figure out what I am smoking. And I don't blame you because it didn't make sense to me at first, but hear me out. So given the release that the releases that we have been seeing the trailers and that Marvel has been releasing, we know basically that the TVA is going to enlist the help of Loki in finding someone that is messing with time and space, I guess, is basically what we get. And yes, there's some funny stuff that's going to happen. He's going to be going back and forth uh, through time. And let's see what, you know, craziness he gets into. And that's great. It sound, look, sound, looks like a lot of fun and I can wait. But where I ended up with why it's Deadpool was a lot more interesting when I went down that rabbit hole. So my first thing, like it's it's been for a long time, was why the why the TVA decides to that this is the moment. He is the person and in this time. So ultimately the easy part is like duh, he has the space stone and the space stone you could move through space and possibly time. I get it. You know, I'm not I'm not I'm not denying that's the one of the reasons why they enlist the Loki. Who who better than to know how it works than a person that's familiar with the Tesseract. So there is no learning curve. And they could kind of let him deal with a goose chase to, you know, clear up his leisure as, as a, or clear up his red in his books by doing this deeds. And that's why we see the TVA showing him possibly his future and the way he ends and all the, but also showing him uh, the, the evil parts of, of what he did. And this is a way of him kind of uh, clearing his name. So yeah, I get that. That's the reason why the TVA would enlist his help, but still wouldn't answer the question as to why are they involved now? Usually they don't get involved. If you're familiar with the source material, they kind of stay to themselves unless something huge happens. It has to be something dramatic because I don't think Thanos was interfering with different universes. You know, different timelines, different, you know, different dimensions. He wasn't messing with it. It was held within his universe. So even that wasn't worthy enough to steal words from Odin. Wasn't worthy enough to bring the, the, the TVA in. So then my mind went to another possible answer, which I don't want to say that one because I am working in a video to hedge my bet as they would say with that one but that this other event is northworthy but we're going to leave that for the upcoming video so that that part wasn't even worth bringing that bringing him in the stuff that was happening in avengers uh one where you saw these portals i think it was still withheld within that universe it wasn't dimensions coming together it wasn't kind of this this thing that would involve them, this action that will demand their presence or their reaction. So when you say, okay, well, what what currently can we give out? And you could write or, or we could cross out. And I crossed out everything until I started re-watching Deadpool 2. And then I remembered the end scene of Deadpool 2. Now everyone might be thinking, oh, but wait. De the Deadpool credits aren't canon. I get you. But Marvel movies, their end credits are canon. They lead to, they, they, they still move the story forward for the most part, right? But they mean something. They're canon to the MCU. When we see Nick Fury, uh, you know, disappear at the last end credit, that, that's still canon. That happened. That didn't happen. Which leads to why Kevin Feige was having problems signing on to Deadpool. Because of those end credits. He knew if, if I bring in Deadpool, I have to make sense of these end credits. That yeah, for Ryan Reynolds was fun. And for all of us, I had a huge laugh. But that's not how Kevin Feige operates. Kevin Feige's credit scenes and, you know, multiple end credit scenes 
means something. I think his, he found his solution as to bring, how do I bring in Deadpool? He found a great out in the TVA. Why you might be asking is simple. Look at the end credits. He goes into a different universe, not his own. He doesn't travel back in time. He goes back and saves his girl. Yeah, we see that. Then he travels to a different timeline, a new universe and kills that Deadpool. You know, whether you hate him or love him or even tolerate that version of Deadpool, he goes back and kills that Deadpool, talks to Wolverine of that timeline and just goes about his freaking day. What ramifications did that cause in that timeline? Then he jumps to another universe and kills a version of Ryan Reynolds reading a Green Lantern script. What ramifications are those in that event? That is a noteworthy event that will bring in the TVA because someone that doesn't belong in a timeline has entered that timeline universe, whatever you want to call it and changes the, the, the events of that universe. That is the biggest red flag. If I could ever th uh, think of one is when you go to another universe, you know, and mess with their, with their timeline, mess with the events, met, go, go out of your way to disturb. And it not just one, one, maybe they don't, they look past the other way, but tw two of them, two universes, then the, the TVA has to enter, which is why Ke that was Kevin Feige's out, which he said, boom, I have the perfect way to bring in, bring in Deadpool. There's no other way or no other explanation. There's a bunch of funny, like, oh, it would be funny if you bring him in here, or it would be meta if he was always involved in the, in the MCU. No, th that can't be the way that he answers it. There's too much time travel now. And once Kevin Feige understood that, that's when he brought him in. And it's going to be the best thing ever because we're going to get two characters that we didn't even know we wanted together that are going to end up together and make gold. And it explains it perfect. You might be thinking why well, it can't because Deadpool is R-rated. He won't be. And we've heard rumors about that. There's going to be parts of him that he isn't going to be R-rated, that he's going to be a PG-13 of Deadpool with Ryan Reynolds. It'll be a perfect addition to Loki and the way it's shot, it's kind of dark and kind of uh, has that Deadpool kind of feel to it, you know, kind and the humor too, as Loki is floating in through time, it has that perfect environment to introduce Deadpool. You know, maybe in the last few episodes, there's that lead up where we start seeing the hints of Deadpool and ultimately leads him into a broader movie of inclusion, like a Doctor Strange and the multitude of, you know, of madness or the, or the universes of madness. I, I can't, the, the name escapes me right now. So excuse me for that. But I think that makes it easier to bring in Deadpool into the MCU and a lot of these uh, shows on Disney Plus are going to be used to introduce characters to then flood them into the big screen or maybe just our smaller screen in the streaming wars that are happening. Before I let you guys go, the last trailer that we saw, we saw that he jumps out of the plane, but we see him get sucked in by the Bifrost. I think, or this is just my theory, is that Odin of that universe pulled him, pulled him back up to Asgard because Odin is alive. No matter in what universe versions you want to think of, he is still alive dur during the events. Anything prior to Thor Ragnarok where Odin dies, if you believe in like the infinite universes, the same universe is running and the events are still happening, just die in different events. So he would die in Asgard as opposed to on, you know, Earth or whatever. But anything prior to those events, Odin is alive. There's a scene that we see Loki in the, in the, in a future where everything is destroyed. We see the Avengers building in complete ruins. The whole New York skyline is done, gone. And Loki is in this reality or, or this, this different uh, timeline. He's jumped universes at this point where he sees what I think is 
a different future from the one in his own uh, timeline that ultimately he dies at the end. So once he jumps over to universes, of course, there's similar events still happening. And that scene that we see at the end, it, when he jumps out of the plane and it's cute, right? It's fun. You're like, oh, you know, he, he's getting picked up by the Bifrost is because that Odin knows because, of course, you know, Heimdall sees all. He must know that there's a version in here, Loki, and all of a sudden there's a version of Loki down there something's off which will explain that bifrost and why we see him get sucked into it and using heimdall his vision he's going to you know ultimately see that we see a mass someone jumping through timelines at the end would be it's going to be revealed it's going to be deadpool so let me know what you guys think in the comments let me know if i'm crazy if you think my theory is plausible, I, but I personally think it's the neatest way and the only viable way, non-comedic and, and ruining the Infinity Saga. Nothing needs to ruin the Infinity Saga. And I think they're trying to work from the snap moving forward. We saw that a little bit in WandaVision. Uh, and I think we're going to see the same thing in Loki and upcoming also movies moving from the, the snap forward. But I think ultimately this is the easiest way to and plausible way to introduce Deadpool into the MCU. So again, let me know what you guys think. I hope you subscribe to the channel, like the channel, and like always, that's a wrap. But before you go, one more thing. After hearing this theory about the introduction of Deadpool and how I believe they are going to do it, and you think about the Spider-Man 3 and what we know and what is rumored of that movie that we are going to get three Spider-Mans and they are going to unite universes, uh, it makes that movie a lot more feasible with the introduction of Deadpool the way I propose in this video. Again, let me know what you guys think.